Today's Albion Online video is all about the right and wrong ways to get ahead on the EU launch. There are so many YouTubers right now just parroting information that they think sounds correct, that they think sounds legitimate, but it's actually not. We learned a lot from the Asia launch ser server and the beta servers that have been people have been playing on, and this is the actual best way to start on EU, and I'm going to be debunking all the other videos and all the other advice that are telling you the wrong things, that are telling you what sounds like a smart plan, and I'm going to tell you the reality why it's not. The first thing is investing in gold. It, this only applies if you get into the, the five-day head start, not the three-day head start, not whenever the server is officially open, but only applies if you get in on day one on the head start, and that is investing in gold. Now, because people are smarter about this now, because in, on the Asia server it was a bit delayed, but a lot of guilds and a lot of very coordinated players are going to be funneling silver into their guild master, into their guild, and they're they're going to be buying gold very, very quickly. So this only works on the literal first day, on the first 8 to 12 hours of the game's launch. By dumping your silver that you're just picking up off the ground into gold, it will pay dividends later. In 1 to 2 weeks, in 1 to 2 months, 500 gold will net you several millions. Now, you're going to be sacrificing your early growth. So if you're okay with going at a slower rate than everyone else, you won't be able to buy upgrades, you won't be able to, uh, you know, repair as easily, especially if you have higher tier gear that a guild is giving or something like that. Essentially, on Asia, I played for three days. I just played for three days and then I never played on that server again. But I invested all of my silver into gold, and uh, a year later it's worth 22 million. And now I did not invest 22 million worth of silver, it was only like maybe three to five million silver, something like that, a really low amount of, of silver I invested, and it quadrupled in one year. So if you're okay with just letting it set and just raise in price, that is what I recommend to you, but it will slow the early growth, which Albion Online, it's... But by the time the first couple weeks are out, everything will be normalized. Unless you're in a guild, there's no reason to rush anyway, but I'm still going to teach you how to rush if you want to as a solo guildless player. So the number one silver activity for solo guildless players, not people in a guild, not people with like five friends, obviously they have an advantage over you. But for everyone else, the majority of people that are solo and guildless, chain running solo dungeons is the way to make silver. It is not a good way to fame farm, it's not a good way to get gear, there won't really be any gear yet because the black market won't be active. Not corrupted dungeons, not ratting statics if you happen to get a druidic you know, set going. Not in the mists, not in open world mob grinding, but dungeons. Now... Mapped dungeons are really good if you can get your hands on some maps. Sometimes people sell them for really cheap, but most of the time, the second best way to get silver and the quickest way is salvaging certain items that people will have that they'll put on the market at a very low value, not knowing that they could salvage it for more silver than they're selling it on the market for. Now, I have an entire list of all of these items, all the most common ones that especially you can do on a fresh start for channel members only. And I, ha I hate to put it behind a paywall for you guys. But that is just the reality of it. My channel members help support me. They keep me fed and keep me not being homeless. And so I have to pay them back somehow. And so they get an advantage. You can click the join button down below five bucks a month. I, again, I'm not trying to sell this on to you. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not going to reveal this part to you guys. You have to pay for it. I'm sorry. One advice all of these channels are parroting is they're saying that, oh, you, you should craft. If you're the first guy to craft like pickaxes, everyone's going to have to buy them so they can mine stuff. And here's the problem with that, okay? These massive guilds full of hundreds of players have all of this mathed out. They have it entirely figured out. By crafting, you will most likely be losing more silver than earning than selling the raw resources to these guilds. I'm not joking. These guilds have to level their crafting as fast as possible, and they will overpay for the raw materials, which unless you go and farm yourself, you're not crafting. As a solo guildless player, you are not going to get anywhere crafting. You're going to spin the wheels in the mud. You're going to lose silver. And uh, unless you get insanely lucky and somehow, like, again, this is for guildless solo players. You're not getting artifact items from solo dungeons. You're just not. They don't drop in solo dungeons. So I don't, I mean, you could try gambling runes, but runes are going to be worth way too much early on because everyone's going to be enchanting and upgrading their gear. And so, like, what are you going to craft? There's nothing you can craft unless someone who's brand new lists, you know, like an, an aspect or an Avalonian item on the market for like way below value, which is not going to happen. 
Uh, there, everyone's going to be buy ordering every single thing on the market. It's gonna it's it's a, a gold rush. It is a massive massive greed rush, and all of these guilds they have bankers and brokers and crafters, and everything is figured out. And you cannot compete with them. You don't have a hideout. They're going to be have hideouts on the second or third day. Um, hell, the first day possibly. I think one guild did it uh, on Asia on the first freaking day. They had a hideout already. And you you cannot compete with them. You simply cannot. You don't own you know any uh, city plots, so you don't get the bonus. They're going to be charging maximum for using those city plots anyway. You are better off just going out and gathering and selling the raw materials, not even refining anything above tier 2. There is no reason for you to refine anything above tier 2. And do not refine tier 3 at the new starter stations down here. Like, when you go to the noob zones, yes, you can refine tier 3 materials, but these have a 0% return rate. You should not do that. That is crafting at a loss. Do not do it. Just gather and sell the raw materials above tier 2. That's it. That's all there is. You cannot, again, you cannot compete with these massively super organized guilds on crafting. You will lose money. But all of these guilds, you know what they're telling you? They are, they want you to craft. They want as many people as possible to craft so that they can buy it up, study it, break it down, salvage it, whatever. And uh, what happened in Asia was a lot of people start, a lot of people crafted. A lot of people were crafting everything in, as much as they could because people didn't understand this game. They were like, oh, well, if I craft a thousand battle axes, I'll be maximum crafting. And then they realize it's more like 100,000 battle axes to max. And they didn't realize how long the grind actually took. So what happened was the markets got flooded with battle axes and everyone that crafted those just lost silver. All right, so gathering is a good source of income, a good source of money. However, 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 only focus on one resource. Do not try to level all of your gathering trees at once. You will fall massively, massively behind. You want to tech up as much as possible on one resource, one resource that you live near. So if you're in Limhurst, you would chop wood. If you're in Bridgewatch, you would skin hides. If you're in Martlock, you would mine stone. You can also mine stone from Bridgewatch because it's so close. Also, the if they do like they did on East, the high yield zones will not be open for the first month and a half. So you're not going to be able to gather as much as you can later on. But once you do have gathering leveled... You will be so much faster than people that skipped it for combat reasons. And gathering is a guaranteed surefire, safe, and reliable, consistent way to make silver. And you will be able to afford everything. I gathered stone on East. And by the first, like by the second day of the full server launch, not the, not the head start stuff, I was able to afford a full 8.3 set. I just gathered for one and a half days and I could afford an 8.3 set of gear. I'm not joking. And I had enough silver left over to invest it all in the gold and then never play on the server again. And just by gathering. All I did was ride around on a tier 3 ox with tier 4, tier 5 gathering equipment. I didn't even get to tier 6. I didn't bother. And just mine stone. That's all I did. And if I skinned hide, I would have been even more wealthy. Because hide is way harder for bots to do. And it's more in demand due to almost all the best armors using leather. And most of the best weapons using leather as well. And skinning has baby drops, which everyone wants a stag, everyone wants a swift claw. You cannot lose by skinning. Also, all these big guilds, all these big, you know, big, I'm the biggest YouTubers out there, they're all going to tell you, oh, go to the Black Zone immediately, go to the Black Zone, blah, 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 blah. No, dude, I'm going to tell you the real truth right now. Everyone is radar hacking, everyone is cheating in this game, and by going into the Black Zone, not only are you a target for all these guilds to just murder and take all your stuff, you are also just going to be hitting empty node after empty node. The reason why you gather in blue zones is because the silver per hour is much higher due to the faster respawn rate. The demand for tier 2 material will be insanely high for the first three months of the game. And so just by harvesting tier 2 materials, you will make way more bank than harvesting tier 5 materials. I am not joking. So mount breeding is whenever you have a private island and you build the uh you know the the pastures and stuff to raise the mounts on not only do these take several days yes if you do it in the, during the five day head start you'll make some money guilds are going to be massively doing it too and it's just an undercut race to the bottom though you will be making bank on mounts horses and oxes just tier three simple stuff uh very early on but after one month after two months after three months the prices will completely normalize and after one to two years even three years later, it is a worthless and very low margin thing, and you will have wasted all of that time, effort, and energy leveling this up. I do not recommend that you ever breed mounts ever in this game on any server, especially the EU Fresh Start. If anything, growing crops, while not the best, will always be a consistent and reliable way to make silver. 
And uh, again, the guilds have this monopolized, have this corner. They're going to be mass producing mounts because mounts are the number one way for them to be mobile in the black zone to capture castles and run around and do their territory fights and stuff. And so they're going to be beelining it where they all have wolves because a, a an army with wolves versus horses or mules will win every time regardless of the gear differentiation. Also, some people like to talk about the elite mounts, like the elite winter bear and the elite terror bird and stuff like that. You have to basically play 20 hours a day of pre-made faction fights in a discord, constantly capturing outposts and ganking as many people as possible in red zones with your faction flag up to be able to speed run your ranking high enough to even get that started. And then you have to have the breeding levels high enough to raise those things. It is not something that a normal, regular, casual, or solo player will ever be able to achieve. So don't even think about raising elite mounts. It is not worth the energy and effort. And again, after two to three months, they're going to be normalized like everything else. So faction warfare, is it good? Is it bad? Well, I'm going to tell you right now that that is a members-only video as well that I made back for the Asia launch. And uh, it still holds true to this day. And I'm not going to speak about it because... Well, if it's members only, it's clearly good. It means it's too good to share with the general public, and so I'm going to leave it at that. So the city plots. Should you card swipe and get a bunch of silver and buy a city plot right away? Absolutely not, and I'm going to tell you all of the reasons why. Every single guild and the cartel there will be, there's always a cartel on every server, and EU will have the same cartel as uh, the US and the Asia servers, except the cartels are going to be either united and holding hands as they normally do, or they might even just compete a little bit. So either way, we lose. The point is, is that if you buy a city plot, you're going to be out so much freaking silver early on, and the cartels will simply drain all of your crafting capacity. They will drain your food on those stations. You don't have the um, an ability to feed these stations as a solo guildless player unless you have a lot of friends that are going to bankroll your city plot. You're, you're just going to burn silver anyway. The, the cartel always wins. You cannot beat them. You cannot fight them. The, the only way to even squeeze a profit is to join them. And even then, because you're new to the cartel, you're going to be on the lo lower rung having to overcharge while they undercut. And they're going to make the millions and you're just going to... You're not even going to make the, the silver back that your city pot, plot clot costs, okay? I can't even talk. I'm so mad. Listen, guys, city plots are a noob trap. They are one of the reasons why card swipers quit this game. They card swipe, they card swipe, they pay into a city plot, and they learn that the cartel is not to be messed with. And I am not joking here. City plots are an absolute waste of your time and silver and not worth the headache and the stress. Unless you're part of the cartel, then you already know what to do, and you're probably not... You're only watching my videos so that you know what stuff to sell higher because the cartel watches every single one of my videos to study it. So gold flipping is something you used to really be able to do back in the day, but most people have this stuff figured out. I'll show you what gold flipping is real quick. So here it is right now. If I buy gold, it's 5,718. And if I sell it, it's 5,707. So it's really, it's 11 silver difference, right? 11 silver per one gold difference. And what you do is you go to the orders button down here and you set up buy orders and then you set up a sell order. And then that's all you basically do. And over the course of several months, yeah, it makes money. It makes about, when I was doing it, uh, I tried it on Asia. It wasn't really ideal on Asia. I was, it was about 287,000 silver a week. It's really not a lot for the amount of effort you put into it. Now, back in the day on, on West, you could do it and make about two to three million a week. Um, even, and if you did higher, like sell by orders, you could technically make 30 million if you had multiple billions to play with, but it's really low margins. It sucks because it puts your, it puts your funds as a solo guildless player, you want to be upgrading, you want to be, you know, advancing your character, your uh, your chef crafting, and everything else that you can think of. You don't want to have that money tied up in essentially what is an investment that will eventually pay off in the long run. But you need that early money to just make your character more advanced. And so I don't recommend it. So what about the black market? Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to craft a whole bunch of tier 2 crap, a bunch of tier 3 crap, and we're going to flood the black market and get a bunch of silver. And here's the thing. Every single guild that's worth a damn, is already got this figured out. They're already going to do it. They're going to beeline it right away. As a solo guildless player, you can make a little bit of money on the black market, but it's not a lot, and it's really going to be hugely, massively dangerous. On Asia, there was there was way more red zone gankers than there was blue zone police, and so transporting to Carleon was just a nightmare. Yeah, you could still technically do it if you got lucky, but ganking is so advanced now in the red zones, it is it, it is its own kind of mafia. Its own kind of cartel. 
And unless you're part of that and part of the politics and part of the big groups, you're not getting in. And if you do, yeah, you might make some silver, but if you don't, you will lose five to ten times your investment to the point where you're going to have to make ten successful deliveries to break even. And it's like there are people that run third party programs that scan all of the markets and scan the black market so they know exactly what they need to transport. And then they have entire caravans with guards, all PvP flagged up, ready to murder everybody and anyone that gets close. You you can't compete with this as a solo guildless player. And uh, again, people are using these cheat programs to basically do all the math and spreadsheeting for them to the point where there's no point in even bothering to like dip into this. What about world bosses, mob timers? We're talking about aspect spawns and mammoths for those mammoth cubs. Everyone wants a mammoth cub. Here's the problem, okay? Even on West, on, on Asia, and especially on EU launch, there are entire server Discord communities based around the timers. Entire, like, filled with thousands of people in these servers. And they all cater to the big guilds that pay them. Guilds pay literal people to keep track of the timers for these kinds of things. As a solo guildless player, the only way to learn about how the timing works is either to... Uh, extract the coding of the game itself and then read the code, or you can go on the test server and kill, you know, uh, an old white aspect, which is the, the big white mammoth, the highest percent chance to get a mammoth cub, and then sit there AFK and time it for the next 48 to 96 hours until it respawns, and do that for months on end until you have an idea of how the timers work. And yes, the peop there's people that have already done this and done the homework and they already know, and they're in these discords, they charge sometimes real money for this information that guilds happily pay, which is against the game rules. But the the thing is, you're... What are you going to do as a solo guildless player? Yes, you can technically solo Old White. You, you could, but you'll never get a chance to because every guild with their 50 people will roll up and then another guild with 100 people will roll up and they're going to duke it out and there's going to be about 20 solo players in there trying to wrap the baby drop and escape before getting brutally murdered and trashing the thing in the first place. It is a bloodbath to get these mammoth timers. Sometimes you could get lucky as a rat. You log in at like 4 in the morning when everyone's asleep, you know, you know, years after the game's been out, and you might be able to sneak a mammoth cub away. Almost never, okay? Let's just be real. Unless you have like 10 friends, this is not a thing that you get to do as a solo guildless player. Avoid worrying about this at all and focus on other things. What about PvPing in the Mist and Corrupted Dungeons? If Let's say you're really good at PvP, you're just a PvP god, you're Diamond 1 in League of Legends, and you think that you get to, you know, just win at PvP all the time and you can collect people's loot. Well, while that may possibly be true, here's the reality, okay? The, the Mists and Corrupted Dungeons are filled with card swipers. Unless you are rich in the real world, you are not going to beat them because they have an infinite bankroll, they can buy the top best gear... They've already bought tomes to be at 120 max spec on the fifth day of the server. I'm not even joking. And, uh, yeah, ha have fun fighting other players who have maximum spec and better gear than you. Like, this game is a numbers game. They have higher item power. You basically lose unless you have a counter to their build. But here's the thing. In the Mists, it is all about the mobility sets, all about the mobility builds. If you have a really good counter to their build, but they can run away, you get nothing but lost time. And that is a fact. And the mobility sets, all they have to do is sweep in and attack you when you're at a slight disadvantage from anything, like being dismounted by bobs. Maybe you are farming just some a random, like, you know, spiky boss, and you're down to half health. Oops, here comes the double-bladed guy to finish you off. You're, you're just going to be losing time, stress, and tears, and silver. It is not worth the doing, especially early on. Later on, yeah, sure, sure, why not? Once you have things established, do not bother with Mr. Corrupted Dungeons as a solo guildless player. And, uh, again, let's say you are the swiper. Well, you, you'll get ratted eventually. Every, every top PvPer gets ratted, and it really pisses them off. It's a huge loss. You know, that rat might win. You, you'd be like, well, I want to be the rat that wins. Okay, why don't you just go buy a bunch of lottery tickets? Why don't you just go gambling? You might as well just go gamble instead of play this game, right? Okay, so there, there's also plenty of drop hackers and disconnect hackers. Now, hackers flood the mist of the radar hackers. I'm not joking. Like every, there's always that one guy in my comments like hacks don't exist, bro. Do a quick Google search. You'll look at Reddit before they delete all the threads. You can see hackers constantly in this game. I am not joking. This game is filled to the brim with cheaters. Every game is. That's just the reality of gaming these days. It sucks. Speed hackers. I haven't seen one in quite a while, maybe about a couple months, but they still exist. Uh, I did get speed hacked and killed in the black zone when I was in that guild. It happens, it's whatever, and uh, that person's still not banned to this day, so whatever. And uh, 
you just get bad if you do the miss this just, just the pve crap right just the the camps and the abbeys you're gonna get bad drops because early on the black market is very slow and isn't populated with a ton of good gucci loot uh, but, but, uh, but, but what about mist capes no the mist capes aren't that big of a money maker compared to the royal capes all right yes if you craft limhurst capes and you craft you know uh, thetford capes and stuff you'll 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 make a little bit of money that's just always been a thing if you craft craft the mist capes by grinding the mist rep and getting you know the, the the might and favor and crap like that you're gonna make a tiny bit more early on but th that cape has been double nerfed since asia's launch and it's not as good as it used to be it's not gonna bring you lots of money and there's going to be tons of people completely dedicated to that craft. They, they've they already decided on it. They're the card. You're competing against card swipers. You're competing against people in the real world that have millions of real life dollars that sit on their ass all day and play a computer game. And they don't have a job and, and they don't have a family because they're too rich to have a family. And that's all they freaking do. Almost like I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you a little secret right now because you're this far in the video. I can reveal this to you. Every single YouTuber and every single Twitch streamer, except me, I, I have done thorough investigations on, all of them live in a minimum of a $400,000 house, or better. Th that's the minimum. These guys are loaded. These guys are freaking blessed and privileged in the real world. They are freaking super rich. There was uh, one streamer that uh, allegedly died not too long ago, and the dude had, like, politicians in his family, like, surgeons, and just a whole bunch of extremely rich and wealthy family backing him up with his hobby of playing Albion Online all day on Twitch, right? I'm not even joking. The dude was loaded and completely super wealthy. And these are the people that you have to compete with. And also, they get, you know, the free premium from SBI. I don't get it. I'm not an official creator. I'm hated. The, the company thinks I'm a plague, a blight, because I tell the truth and I tell it harshly. And, and you know, without uh, without worry, oh, oh, I might upset some, some corporate bootlicker in still front, right? The, the real truth of the matter is these guys are completely, utterly loaded in the real world. And they don't see the game the, the way that you and I do. The majority of us, we can't afford to pay real money for premium. We can't afford to just swipe our credit card and get some gold and transmute it to silver. No, 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 no. We have to play the game the way the game was designed, and we have to make that money manually through virtual labor. I'm not even joking. So that's your competition? And if you're some rich, wise guy, then uh, how about hitting that thanks button? How about, you know... Buying a, ch a channel membership or something, right? But but regardless of that, uh, yeah, that's your competition, bro. What about tracking? Okay, so the thing with tracking is if you're solo, the drops suck, the content sucks because it takes forever, especially early on. You won't have the right gear set. You won't have the maximum spec required to solo these things, at least comfortably. People will ride up and just step in your AoE and then you're dead. They will dismount and then you're dead. And then they get to take all your loot. It's su it's such a slow process. It's like It can be up to 15, 20 minutes for one drop. And that's if it drops. And it's not, it'd make you a few hundred thousand. You're better off just gathering in a blue zone. I'm not joking. You make more silver gathering in a blue zone than you do doing tracking as solo. Now, if you're in a group, you have a bunch of lads that you play with, then yes, go for it. it you will make a you will make a pretty you know decent amount of bank. You have like six friends. Go do tracking. Go do the six to eight group size tracking. You'll make some decent buck. But um, group players also have better alternatives anyway. So what about potion crafting and food crafting? So I have made countless videos on both of these subjects. Even recently, you can check them out on my channel. Just use the search bar if you're watching this deep into the future. But I will tell you that early on, if you have multiple characters with premium active through card swiping or through very good flipping, then you can make potion crafting work for you. You have a bunch of characters that grow crops and a bunch of characters that craft the potions, yeah, you can make a ton of silver. You you absolutely can. Until, until premium reaches 15 million. Once one month of premium costs 15 million, all of those alt characters, all of those characters that you've worked so hard to level up and pay for are completely pointless and useless and you will be at a huge time loss. Now for Chef... You technically could do with something similar, or the thing with Chef is that the food prices will always be normalized and rounded and very simplistic because there is, uh, yeah, yes, Carleone has a boost for cooking, which you do not need to make a profit on. Chef is the only 
future-proof crafting thing there is. I've made so many videos on it, I don't need to repeat myself, but uh, if I had to play on EU as a brand new player from scratch, I would level as a chef. Simple as, you will almost always turn a profit, an easy profit, especially on crafting bonus day. You don't need to hide out. Uh, it is amazing, and it beats potion crafting massively because potion crafting requires those rare materials from tracking, which you're going to have to wait one to two years uh, for all the whales crafting weapons and other junk to, you know, it's, it's, it's a nightmare to level potion crafting. I think I did it on West. I actually did it on West. I have max potion crafting. It cost me about 400 million silver, and it's going to cost you multiple billions on the EU server, so just avoid it. You can max chef on, on the new server probably in your first month if you swipe, or if you're really good with flips. It'll cost you about 120 million or so uh, on the new server, and yeah, that's not exaggerating. That's just how it is, because everything you cook and use, the only ingredients are time. Everything that you need for a chef, for just the basic stuff, not like the fish oil sauce or anything, is acquired through time and you know all the players with islands growing pumpkins and growing you know animals and stuff it all just requires time it doesn't require going out and getting some rare drop it doesn't go require going out into the black zone it just requires people having an island and growing stuff so you can do it much cheaper and it will spin a better profit and an easier profit that will take you less time and less math to do so always 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 pick chef over potion crafting and besides, guilds are going to have dedicated potion crafters anyway, so have fun competing with them. And they're going to have black zone hideouts in the roads for that potion bonus. <laughs> now, what about laborers? I have I have always just t told you guys to build laborers, but SBI in a patch a while ago, they made private islands and guild islands insanely expensive. So here's the thing. Yes, you can make a profit with laborers. You can always make a profit with laborers, but it's going to take a long time to break even. It used to be three months to break even on just about any kind of laborer or thing that you built. Now, it is about eight months to break even. Eight months, you're going to be in the red, paying for the construction, paying for the, the cost of premium, paying for the cost of private and guild islands, paying for the cost of etc., etc., but after that eight months, if you play every single day, you will turn a profit. And uh, yeah, it's it, it's nightmarish. It, it 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 will allow you to make more silver on anything you do. If you you know gather, there's more silver from gathering laborers. If you grind mobs, you got mercenaries, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you plan to play the long game, the sooner that you get laborers going, the better. But it will not help you on the early fresh start. It will not help you. Rise above the rest early on. I'm sorry. So what exactly should you do to get ahead? I'm going to give you two different options. The first option will be for all you rich guys who can card swipe. And then the other one for will be for all the free-to-play players who have to wait the five days in order to play. Who won't spend a single dime and will have to manually grind out everything. Let's get started. But before we get started, I just want to point out that if you're a new player, you've never played Albion Online before... By using my referral link and making an account, you get a experienced tome reward. They're called Tomes of Insight. You'll receive those for using my link. I have more referrals than anyone else on this game because I am the biggest YouTuber. And so by using this link, as soon as you leave Tutorial Island, in your mail will be Fame Tomes. And uh, here's how to find it on all of my videos. You simply scroll down. You expand the description here. And if this link here, it says, if you want to play Albion Online, click here. You click that link. It'll take you to albiononline.com. You make your account. And then after Tutorial Island, you'll have more experience than people that did not do this. Here's how it works if you're a rich man. Step one is to buy a channel membership for five bucks a month. Click that join button down below this video. And by doing so, you'll learn all the better stuff that is too good for the public. Step number two, you card swipe for a bunch of gold and then cash in that gold for silver anytime you want to buy anything in the game. Here is your route. You do Tutorial Island. You swipe for tomes out once you're done with Tutorial Island. You upgrade to Tier 3. You buy more tomes. You upgrade to Tier 4. You buy more tomes. You upgrade to Tier 5.3 gear. And at this point, there won't be enough tomes in the game currently. So you'll have to play with 5.3 gear for a little while. Then you will swipe and buy tomes later on once they become available, getting to level 100 mastery. This will allow you to buy 8.3 gear. You won't have 8.4 gear available yet, unless you know a guy. You probably don't know a guy, though, since you're so rich and making real money in the real world. After that, you will then swipe to be able to afford private islands, and then as many guild islands as you want. 
Um, I recommend 100 since you have infinite real life money anyway. Then you will have laborers of all and every type up up to tier 5, at least minimum tier 5. And remember, anytime that you want to skip a fame grind or a silver grind, you just card swipe. That's all there is to it. And then you can do whatever you want, king. Now, there's one thing I didn't put on screen in text for those that are just not listening to me. And that is buy the Founders Pack, okay? If you are a rich man, the Founders Packs are the best way to convert real money into legitimate gold. Uh, I do have a video coming out later on that explains this in further detail. But in that video, it basically it comes out to that everyone that bought like the Crystal Founders Pack back when Asia launched... They were getting 2.39 million silver per $1 spent. So if you buy the $200 Founders Pack, and you can buy two of them, the dark one and the light one, that means you can spend 400 real-life dollars. I know, that's insane to me, but for some of people out there, they make that much in one hour. They, make, they made that much watching this video. It's crazy, I know, right? For those people, that $400 becomes like... Nearly 900, close to 900 that million silver, almost 1 billion silver from two purchases. You will not get a better silver deal ever legitimately through the cash shop. You just simply won't. So there you go, rich guys. That's how you play the game. Now for everyone else, after Tutorial Island, you're going to haul 999 Rough Stone to Bridge Watch. Then you're going to sell and sell order the rough stone. You're going to use my referral tome by clicking my referral link. You should have the tomes by now. So skip straight to tier 3. Then you're going to grind tier 4 blue zones. You won't have the reaver yet, but you'll do fine until you can equip tier 4 gear. Then you're going to gather until you have tier 4 gathering. Then you're going to sell the stone or the hide, whichever one you chose, not both. And you're going to level gathering to tier 5 as well as buying tier 4 combat gear. 4.1. I should have put 4.1 on the screen. Whatever. Then, after that, you're going to continue grinding until you can wear Tier 5 gear, in which case you're going to gather until you can buy 5.3 gear. And then you're going to use that to farm Tier 5 Yellow Zone Open World mobs, and until you have 100 Mastery, which will take you 16 hours, then you will gather a tier until Tier 7 or Tier 8, and then you're going to buy a Tier 8.3 set with all the gathering you've done. Once you have that Tier 8.3 set, you will then gather and grind until you have 100 Specs, and then you will buy premium with the money that you have. You'll start growing herbs on your personal island, and then you can do whatever you want because you will be financially secure. You will be financially independent, all as a free-to-play, guildless, and solo player. And this is easily achievable if you just simply chip away at it every day. And there you go. That's how to get rich, how to get ahead of everyone else by playing consistently and safely with zero risk and zero harm to your character. And zero luck generation, is, might I add. And that is the video. Do not be fooled by these other guys. They are simply just parroting information that they did not put into practice. Almost all of them are part of big guilds, and big guilds want you to be broke, dead, naked, in the black zone, suffering. And they will crack that whip and put you to work and drain all of your silver and your sanity. So you don't want to be that guy. With that said, thank you so much. Make sure to punch a bunny for me in the video game, of course. And hit that like button or more bunnies will get punched. And finally, on the right side of your screen, there's a video you should absolutely click. And if you don't click it, then you're going to fall behind on the EU launch. Dun-dun-dun.